Wow, good morning, church! Are you glad to be in the house of God today? Hindi to parang, this is not kind of classroom when I tell you to do it, you do it. Um, do it because you are convicted. Amen? So who here is glad to be in the house of God today? Who here is glad that you don't have work this morning, that you can be in the presence of God? Amen? This is such luxury. We may be used to having our Sundays free, but I know a lot of people praying for their Sundays and their Saturdays to be free so they can come to church. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, can you look the person in the eye, the person next to you, and say, I'm happy you're here. One more time, say, I'm happy you're here. Yung isa sa likod gumagana, may pa face here. Wow, do you even know their name? <laughs> Ask nga for their name if you guys don't know. <laughs> but, wow, this is really a family. But I'm so excited to preach the Word of God today because we are talking about the presence of God one more time. And before I do that, I just have a few announcements to make. Okay, makinig, makinig everyone. Okay, everyone's here. All right, say next week. We are not going to be here, okay? Because next week, say next week again, next week. is anniversary week. It will be our 16th year anniversary. Wow, that's crazy. See, who here has, has a child 16 above? Okay, okay, the moms and the dads. Who here is 16 and above, everyone? Anyway, all I wanted to say, it takes a village to raise up a child. Imagine building a church. And so God gets all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And so next week on our 16th anniversary, we're inviting you to come. We're going to be in ICC, correct? I, uh, IIC, what does that stand for? Taga Dubai, sorry. Indian Cultural is Ibastayon. And then, then no, we'll have we'll have uh, we'll have our graphic up later after our pre after the preaching. And please take a picture of that so that you know all the details. We have a lot of things in store for our family. And so I'm again, like I said, I'm gonna be continuing our series called the Presence of God. Who here has been blessed since the beginning of this year? Hearing this series. Amen. And see, if you're coming here for the first time, just want to say welcome to church. Maybe it's your second time of, or third time. Just want to say thank you for coming. And the reason why we're talking about this is we believe as Christians and even as a church that we don't want to do anything without the presence of God. Our series, our anchor verse is in Exodus 33:15, And in the beginning of the series, we talked about the life of Moses. And God gave him a big assignment, a call. Meaning to say, he, it was so big that he needed strength beyond himself. He needed resources beyond himself. Sa madaling sabi, he needed God. And so Exodus 33:15 is an attitude. It's a heart posture. And Moses said to God, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. And this means a lot of things. It says, God, if your presence is not going to go with me, don't send me anywhere. God, if my plans, if your presence isn't there, I do not want to go. I don't want to do it. Lord, if my decision right now, my relationships right now, if your presence is not going to be here, I'm not going to do it. That's what this means. And this is a hard posture to do whatever it takes to be closer to God to be marked by the presence of God. And so today, the preaching, uh, the, the, the message, the title of my message is this. It's called Marked by the Presence of God. If you have your notebooks with you, your phones, please take them out. Write notes because God takes note of those who takes note. I haven't said that in a while. But we're going to be going through 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 to 18. And so, you know, it's really easy it's easy to be a Christian or to look like a Christian when things are going well, amen? 
It's easy to love people when they do things that you want them to do. Amen? It's easy to like someone when they are likable, correct? It's easy to be patient when we have patience. Wow. It's easy to be patient. Strike one. <laughs> Tignan natin kung ilan for the rest of the day. But it's easy to be patient when you've had 10 hours of sleep, tama? It's easy to love our kids, to love our husbands, our wives when they've done something correct, right? But it's hard. You and I, we may have gone through different backgrounds. We may have different upbringings. We're from different families. But I believe every single one of us can attest and say, it's hard to be a Christian when life is tough, correct? And so this message is not a repetitive message of what we've discussed before. I want to talk, to talk about how it means to be marked by the presence of God in tough times. Hmm. Who here has gone through tough times? I just want to see if I'm talking to imperfect people, real people, authentic tayo. Who here has had tough times? Who here has had good times? It's true what Ecclesiastes said, diba? Every season, everyone goes through different seasons. Who here, okay, let's be honest, who here actually is not going through a good season right now? You could say, it's, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Like, if it's out of 10, 5, you feel like the season is a 5, it's tough. You're going through something. And 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 to 18, we're going to go through it. But the context of the story is Apostle Paul was going through a lot of suffering. He was talking to the church of Corinth. And basically, he was saying um, how to go through life despite all of the stuff that they are going through. But before that, I want to ask you what does Mark mean? It's not, a, it's not just a name. <laughs> Mark means stamped, right? Stamped by God. Meaning, it is known that you are a child of God. Wow. It is no sealed. Wala nang mababago. Wow. Nothing can change. That means the God of the heavens and the universe knows you by your name and also loves you. But that means Him, He has marked you with His presence. But when we go through tough times, it's hard to remember. Amen. It's so crazy because in the, in the economy of, of, of heaven, in the life of being a Christian, it's actually pretty upside down, correct? If you want to feel strong, you have to be weak. If you want to be strong, what I, what I mean by that, if you, you want to be strong, you have to be surrendered to the Lord. You have to reach the end of yourself to gain His strength, correct? If you want to be rich, you got to be generous. If you want to be the first, you must be last. You want to lead, you got to be a servant. That's what Jesus did here on earth, correct? And so it's so different. It's different being marked by God's presence. It's different living a life for Jesus. And so, marked by God's presence. I, I remember when I used to, uh, just give you a bit of story. I remember when I used to go to university, I went to Malaysia. Super random story. Uh, I wanted to take up a course here in the UAE. It wasn't available. I had to go abroad. So God brought me to Malaysia. And so here in this suburban area, it's a student town. Unfortunately, there weren't a lot of Filipinos. In fact, the only Filipino that I knew was a friend of mine, my very first friend in the UAE in fifth grade when I moved here. And she's also like, she, like she has an accent when she speaks Tagalog. She just doesn't know how to speak Tagalog. She's not Pinoy, but she's Pinoy. Alam mo yung mga, je, yung mga gets niyo ba? Dapat lang kamita kayo ng mga ganon na parang, ash, they really, they really try to speak Tagalog but they can't. And so that, that, she's the only Filipino that I know in that campus. And so, it was hard. I missed speaking Tagalog every time I would go on Skype at that time with my parents and try to speak in Tagalog to them just so I can, I can, hasa, wow, I can, wow, <laughs> galings. <laughs> it's like, ba? Tama ba? Tama, run pa lang. And they, uh, and so, I remember, I went to this favorite mall of mine. It's called Sunway Pyramid. And we were having lunch with friends of mine. And we go to this restaurant. And in this restaurant, I sit. And this, wa this, this, wa this waitress, she was happy. She was smiling. She was, she, she, it's like she's, that, 
that business is hers. It's like, that's her, not just her job, but it's hers. She's owning it. She's so warm and so hospitable and would not just do what she's told to do. She's above and beyond. And, and to me, I was observing her and not just because of her face. I lived in Malaysia. Everyone kind of looked the same. You can, can't tell if Indonesian, Malaysian, Filipino, Thailand. It's hard. But because of how she was, she was so distinct. I said, ah, Pinoyito. Pinoyito, Pinoyito. So I go up to her, ate. I said, ate. And she's like, look. She's like, Pinoy? Pinoy! Pinoy! <laughs> Tapos sobrang tumang-tama na kami, para kami nakakita ng alien. Parang pong, it's like you go to Madagascar, and they're like, oh, Filipino! There's a Filipino here! And I was so, I was so thrilled, I was so happy, and it was if, I knew that she was Filipino before she even told me because of how she was. And similar to us as Christians, I pray that all of us people would know that we carry something different. That we're marked by the presence of God because we carry joy, we carry peace despite our circumstance. Especially through our tough times. See, before I read through our scripture reading, this is what Jesus says. Jesus never promised that we would have a good life, correct? Jesus never promised, if you say yes to me, your life is going to be a bed of roses, mattress, the most expensive mattress. You will have all of the provision that you need, any time that you need it. All the relationships would be perfect. He never promised that. Because why would we have that? We wouldn't need a savior, correct? We wouldn't need a healer. We wouldn't need a God. We would be overly self-sufficient. We would take credit for everything. We would be so prideful. We would be entitled. And God knows what's best. You see, it says in John 16, 33, Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. He wasn't overly positive. He said, hey, listen, even if you say yes to me, even if you have me, life, the reality of life will still kick in. But take heart, say take heart. For I have overcome the world. Amen. And so, amen, amen. And so if Jesus says, listen, in this life you will have trouble, but take heart. How does it look like to take heart? How does it look like to live in the very fact of what Jesus said, that I have overcome the world? How does it look like? And so, Apostle Paul goes through it in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 to 18. Who here brought their physical Bible? Who here brought their physical Bible? Okay, okay. Next week, say next week. Bring a physical Bible. Let's make this a culture. Last week we went, um, before I start, last week we, we went to a new venue in Dubai. Um, it's a long story as well. But the church before us, they all went, they were all from a nationality you would have never imagined would have Christians. It was Wow, it was a Holy Spirit church. You can tell they were, they were casting out things. They were praying for one another. That's why we're like, Hala, late na kami, pasok na kami. Uh, But it was such a blessing for us to see. And all of them were carrying a physical Bible. It's so different reading the Word of God physically. And so if you have a Bible, please bring it. Don't let it dust. Don't let it be a furniture at home. Bring it, okay? So let's go through 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. And if you have your Bibles with you, read it with me. And if not, we're going to go through it together in the screen. Verse 7, it says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side but not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive is at, are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, say so then. Death is at work in us, but life is at work with you in earth. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead 
will also raise up with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, this is for your benefit. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Amen. Read the word with conviction like you fully believe what God says, what God says in the word. Amen. And so, this is what Apostle Paul is telling everyone. Listen. You're going to go through tough times. We are like treasures in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. How does it look like for us to be marked by the presence of God to live that out in tough times? Write that down. How does it look like? There you go. How does it look like to be marked by the presence of God in tough times? Love a note taking church. <laughs> and I'm going to go through the word marked with everyone. Changed it from yesterday. I'm going to go through the word marked and we're going to go through each verse in this text. All right? So, marked, how does it look like to be marked by the presence of God in tough times? M is this made to live with purpose. Mm. Everything we go through, we know that there is purpose. Amen? Amen. 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 Verse, let's go through the verse one by one. It says here, we have this treasure in jars of clay. Treasure means the word, capital W. This is the word. In jars of clay. Jars of clay in the olden times for you to create pots, for you to create uh, cisterns, for you to create yung mga lalagyanan, jars, right? Jars, you have to mold it. The maker had, had to mold it to make sure that it can carry what is meant to go, come, come inside. But it says here, we are jars, but we're made out of clay. If you've Known, if you've, if you've touched clay, di ba, the, before it's made, kapag basa, parang na, namamold talaga siya, di ba? Pwedeng i-crush, pwedeng i-ano, kung anong pwede mong suntukin, what? Pero it, it, it can be molded, but when it's hard na, when it's dry, di ba, it can easily be broken, di ba? But it says here that we have this treasure, meaning the Bible, the Word of God in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. What does it mean? That our purpose in our lives, the purpose of why we are here on earth, the purpose of the things that we are going through is that our lives is meant to glorify God. Our lives are meant to show the power of the Word of God through our circumstances. Well, maybe you're saying, God, hindi ko to pinili. I didn't ask for this. You asked me to have a relationship with you. I didn't ask to go through the stuff that I'm going through now. I didn't ask for you to take away my, 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 my sister, my daughter, my, my husband, my wife. I didn't ask you to do, I didn't ask for this. And yet, Apostle Paul says, we, there is purpose in what we are going through. And while we're going through it, Christ is made known in your life. You are getting to know who Jesus is in your life. You're getting to know His power inside of you so that you can actually know that He's true. That you can actually know that what the Bible says is true. Parang ito yung totoo, this is true. But then, ibahid mo ng pinagdadaanan mo, you will know how truer it is talaga. Amen? And so, 
How does it look like to be marked by the presence of God? It's made to live with purpose. There's this verse that we love um, saying. It's in Romans 8.28. And it says, For we know that in all things... God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. And so everything that we go through, there is purpose in our lives, but He works all things for the good, which we will talk about a little bit later. So our purpose in our life, our purpose is to glorify God. Amen? It says in verse 10, We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. That means whatever Jesus has gone through, all of the pain and all of our suffering, we, we, we get a bit of that. Just a bit. So that we, we may depend on Him even more when we go through the same thing. You know, the Bible says that Jesus understands what we're going through. That's wild. God could have sat in the heavens and the earth and just watched us like He says CCTV. It doesn't work that way. He loves us so much that He sent his, his Son, one and only Son. He sent it so that we won't be alone. So that when we need strength, we get strength. When we need healing, we get healing. So that we don't have to live in perfection and performance because Jesus has done everything. So that we can live by grace. Amen. Can you believe that? There's purpose. But in our, in our situation, in our lives, in every season of our lives, the power of the cross is revealed in our lives. For we, verse 11, for we who are alive are always being given over to the death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. Can you imagine that? So that his, his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So this is us. Ito lang ako. Alam mo yung saying na yun? Ito na lang. Ito ako eh. Take me as I am. And so us, as humans, we're limited in every way. Praise God for that, tama? But it says here, his life may be revealed, real, reveal, revealed. It's like two. Yes, I can extract two. That his life may be revealed in our limited mortal body. The supernatural is accessible to us. Jesus' power is accessible to us. But not just for us. There is purpose. Say, there is purpose. What's, what do you think it is in your life? But sometimes we go through things we don't understand. The Bible says, Now I see in part, then I will know, know fully. But even then I am fully known. That's what the Bible says. You may not understand why you go through things. Later on you will know it fully. But even as you go through it, you are fully known by the God of the heavens and the earth. Amen. And so, here's an encouragement to everyone. It's easy to preach this. It's hard to live it out. I get it. Right? It's easy. It's hard to get. It's hard. I get, I get it. It's hard. But the encouragement is this. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because at the end of yourself, that's where Christ finally comes in. Amen. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. And just like jars of clay... Verse 8, Sabidon, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. If you see this, we're talking physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, everything it test tayo dito sa buhay na to. But kahit anong pagdaanan natin, mabuti ang Diyos. Mm, mabuti ang Diyos. Abuti ang Diyos. So, the second one is this. How does it look like to be marked by the presence of God? A, we are able to have the right perspective in every circumstance. Verse 13 says, I believed, therefore I have spoken. That's in Isaiah. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. Imagine if you read through the Corinthians, actually if you read through different books of the Bible, it shows you heavenly perspective that you can live out in your life. That you can tell yourself heavenly perspective, the right perspective 
does not mean your emotions have to come first. Parang, okay, I feel like this, then therefore I can walk in it. The right perspective means kahit anong feel natin, whatever we are feeling, regardless of what's going on in our lives, we can, like I said, be strong. Kanina, don't give up. We can do that because we have the right perspective. And that perspective, honestly, it comes from God. It comes from the presence of God. It comes by showing up when we don't feel like it. Showing up in your private times. And private moments with God. Spending time with God. Because if He is our source of strength, we need Him. We need Him. You may have, may, you, may, you're, you may be going through a good season. Or whatever season it is. What about tomorrow? The enemy is going to give you fear about tomorrow. Anxiety and worry about the next 10 years of your lives. But you show up, God will say, focus on right now. I give you grace for 24 hours. Spend time with me. Don't miss out. I want to talk to you, says God. And so you're able to get the right perspective in every circumstance. There have been many moments where in my life, <laughs> when I became a Christian, I quickly knew life is not easy. Like I knew it was tough, but thank God I finally have Jesus. But when I went, became a Christian and then got into ministry, <laughs> I got pruned. I got, I got, God removed things from me, the things I wanted. Even just this week, I had to surrender something. Um, but, but the reason why I'm able to go through it, not because of my own strength, it's because of the grace of God. And I don't know how the the perspective that God gives is so timely. Sometimes it's a word from God na panghahawakan mo. Sometimes it's just a, just even one word. Kanina, Psalms 46 is so amazing. Just talking about it earlier that uh, as I was driving here and I, I, was, I wasn't feeling, feeling okay going through stuff in the past week, feeling tired, honestly. Psalms 46 came up in my head and then I read through it and it says there, it says Psalms 46 be still and know that I am God be still verse 11 the Lord Almighty is with us and it felt like Jesus was reminding me hey I'm with you Kalma, be still do what I have called you to do do what I have called you to do be still it will be okay be still that perspective gave me joy gave me peace immediately grace is sufficient. <laughs> Grace is sufficient. See, another perspective is in verse 15, which we will talk about later on. But it says, all this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. And what does that mean? That what you're ge- going through is going to glorify God. How? Because you're going to be like a walking Bible, like a mirror, and, j- and people around you who don't even know Jesus or may know Jesus will be encouraged by your faith, will be strengthened because of the joy that you have. And, 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 and they will see and they will, it will cause that situation you're going through, it will cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Wow. See, if there's someone who can complain, if there is someone who can walk away, who can say, ano ba to? Bakit ganito yung pinagdadaanan ko? If someone could be in depression, it, it will probably be Paul. And I don't, I, I, I don't appreciate it when people compare situations in life. That's unfair. But all I'm saying is, we all went through tough times. If you go through 11 to 23, sabi ni Paul, I, are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. He said that, just read through the verses prior to this for that context. It says, I am more, I've worked much harder, been in, pre, been, third, been, been in prison more frequently been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was petaled with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country. Lahat my danger. I have labored and toiled and I have gone 
without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold and naked besides everything I face daily. The pressure of my concerns for all churches. In our generation now, where is the resiliency? Where is the dependence on God? In our faith, the older ones, I want to talk to everyone who is o older, the old. Our faith is so important because it will reach the generations to come. Before, the millennials, they're the absolute rebels. They'll do what they want because they want to go against what their parents said. The generation now, they're too anxious to make a decision. They think about all of the things. And I speak life over that in Jesus' name. But can you imagine? You need faith as a mom, a dad, a sister, a friend. You need faith to tell them, hey, God is good and He is real. And just like the song that we sang earlier, I will not just utter songs and words, but I'm going to live it out. I'm going to live. I'm, I have the heart of worship. I am going to live it out and they will see the strength of God in your life. It is, we are in a battle to have the right perspective, to live with purpose, to be marked by the presence of God. Do not delay. Do not waste your time. Do not focus on just financial provision. Do not focus on just getting that land. Focus on the generations ahead. Amen? Because lives are at stake. Eternity is at stake. And Apostle Paul did ministry this way. For us, we'll complain because we don't have data on our phones. We'll complain because we had to, to fast and had to give up one meal a day. And I'm trying to make a comparison here because this is, this is the world that he, went, that he lived in the past. And we have more pressure. And see, in the beginning of the Christian walk, the enemy will try to catch you with that sin and, that, and the... And the and the, and the addictions, the things that you struggle in the past, because you're you you say yes to Jesus, but you're still used to this flesh. Amen. Sino dito who went through that? That's the beginning stage of your Christian walk, and then you say, "I God, Jesus, I you are my savior. I give my life to you." So so you get saved. The next thing is the next stage is you realize you can't do anything with God, so you give your life to His lordship. Jesus, you are my Lord. Not just my savior, but I, I allow you to take full control of my life. Second stage. What is the remaining stage? The enemy will take away your attention. You cannot hear the still small voice when all we do is look at our phones. The amount of times we missed on hearing the Lord, we missed on encouraging people, and I say this, I'm passionate about this because I struggle with it too. We need the help of God. You see that this is what he went through. And yet, 2 Corinthians, we are crushed but not perplexed. All these things he was saying. He was saying it with conviction and authority because he went through it and can still say that, God, you're still good. Wow. And so, A, being marked by the presence of God when when we have the right perspective in every circumstance. And for you to get the perspective, read your Bible. Spend time with God. That's one thing. The only thing you'll hear from today. Take that. Try it. You may have tried different things. Get that counsel from the Lord. Get counsel from leaders. Do whatever it takes because that is what will strengthen you. Amen? Again, Romans 8.28 says, In all things, we know, that means fully we know that in all things, He will work for your good. Our suffering will make us become more and more like Jesus. Amen? An eternal perspective comes from being in the presence of God. Tama? But being sustained as well comes from being in the presence of God. So question ko sa inyo is sulat nyo to. What perspective do you need in this season? What perspective do you need to hold on in this season? Paul even says, enough with the baby food, with the infant milk. Get real food. What perspective do you need? And later on, I want you to take the do not miss this chance when we are going to be worshiping later on ask the Holy Spirit for a perspective in your life 
And the next one is this. What perspective do you need to see? Next one is this. Run, a person who is marked by the presence of God looks like he or she runs to the throne of God. Like I said, we need to go back to the Word. We need to go back to God. Because He knows. He is the holder of all timelines. You may not have gotten what you want right now. Your prayers may not have been answered yet. But God knows. He knows He's given you a purpose in this life. And He knows that your character right now might not be able to sustain it if you walk in it now. We trust the Lord. But in this middle of whatever season you're in, run to the throne of God. Amen. David ran to God. Paul ran to God. You know who else ran to God? Jesus. While he was here fully on earth, he was perfect. He did everything. He did, but, but he was fully man. That's hard if you're living in the same earth that Paul did and we did. Jesus lived on the same earth. He looked at the same moon that we see now. Perspective. And he ran to God. He knew that the schedules that he has, I don't know if you're a planner. I have my calendar. I can see this, 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 I have to do this. Before all that, Jesus, he didn't say have a, have a easy life. Eh? He had a busy schedule. Before that, he would run to the mountain and would spend time with God. Being marked by the presence of God is knowing that you need God. And so run to the throne of grace. Psalms 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in times of trouble. Ever-present meaning nanjan palage every single second, every single minute. God loves you so much. You have no idea how passionate He is about you. He is for you and not against you. And He's our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. And see, when we understand, not just understand that God is good, but actually being strengthened by that truth, Guess what? While we're going through seasons of life, we can still be kind to others and to ourselves. Saan natin paghuhugutan yung lakas? Kay God lang. I am so blessed and amazed seeing all of our pastors, our leaders, our volunteers show up weekly. Do you think this is easy to pull off? No. We have volunteers coming every, almost every day to rehearse, leaders, to spend time with, their, with life groups. It is not easy. But I praise and thank God because they're here so that more people can encounter Jesus, so that you can encounter Jesus. But they're going through stuff as well. And yet God is strengthening them, filling them up to be kind to others, generous to others, but again, same people who are volunteering leaders, everyone actually here, kind to others might be easy, but sometimes being kind to ourselves isn't, correct? Mm, we're hard on ourselves. My, my, my tumatawa, my tumatawa. <laughs> my nakaka-relate. Ako, I, I would say I'm really hard on myself, honestly. I am. But sabi dun, Sabidon, may there's a part there, crushed, uh, sabidon, perplexed but not in despair. We're talking mentally and emotionally. For me, one of my biggest battles sometimes is not knowing that God's called me. Or sometimes it's calling that, it, 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 it's, it's saying that I am not good enough for this, Lord. I haven't worked, walked through this. How can you give me authority and all these? Like, I'm hard on myself. If I don't show up to read my Bible, hala, I'm supposed to lead life group pa naman, paano na? Who here can... Relate, relate, relate. And being marked by the presence of God. They are kind to others and themselves because they know that God's love is sufficient for them. And they are good enough. You are, you and I, we're already loved before we even woke up. <laughs> woke up. And so our dependency in, in Christ, it's actually for, for us and for others. Kind to others and self. We got to be kind to ourselves. Otherwise, it will be very, very hard to continue going. Okay, be easy on yourself. My friend would always tell me that. Bea, be easy on yourself. 
Fashion, be easy on yourself. Fashion, be easy on yourself. You're doing great. <laughs> You're doing great, guys. You're doing great. So be easy on yourself. Hmm. And so, it says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, it says here, And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing, come in abundance to you. So that you may always, meaning under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything and have abundance for every good work and act of charity. This is not just for the good times. This is for every season. And God is able to make all grace come in abundance to you. Amen? So that in every circumstance, you may be completely sufficient, meaning sufficient to God in everything. So even when we're going through things, we have the abundance to still do good work. To still love people. To still love your wife. To still respect your husband. To still submit to authority, even if you don't necessarily agree. To still be generous with your time, generous not just with your money, to love people well, your boss, your co co-workers, to love them well. Why? Because there is grace for all of us. Amen? And the next one is this. How does it look like to be marked by the presence of God? We have eternity in mind. Eternity in mind. It says in verse 16, Therefore, we do not lose heart. They say, therefore, they were acknowledging all of the stuff that they were going through. But therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly, we are wasting away. It looks like we're in suffering. But inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Heavenly perspective, we fix on our eyes beyond what we can see. Since what is seen are troubles now, temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. Imagine same Apostle Paul saying he was flawed, he was beaten. Sabi niya, light and momentary troubles. Light ba yun, Paul? Huh? Parang di naman yun light. And yet he says light in comparison to the eternal glory. Wow. Praise God for that hope that we can hold on to. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. That means even death, he has overcome. All the troubles that we go through, it's big and God cares for them. But think about it. If you are still in high school, you care about getting your homework done and doing ministry at the same time and reaching out to our friends and being a good daughter, being a good son in high school, that's not light for their, for their, for their perspective. Or when you become a mom and then all these things, you get what I'm trying to say? And yet, and yet, and yet, it says, fix your eyes on what is seen and unseen. It is momentary. There you can have, we can have hope, which is that eternal glory that far outweighs them all. I'll tell you a story. Um, I praise and thank God because I grew up in a family of people who really have faith. Mom, papi and mommy, they have faith. I, you would love to just sit with them and ask questions and stories. Like, I love doing that now. Like, coming back here, going on car rides with my dad, I'd ask him stories. He'll just share all of the stuff that he went through. And I, and, and I remember when he told me that uh, he, he, had, he had to go through a total hip replacement, so a surgery. And he would tell me every single part of the story where God had provided out of nowhere. Like, and even, like, he, he was almost as if, I remember he was giving me a timeline of his life and, and showed me this is where God was. This is where God's provision was. This is where I saw the hand of God in your mom's life. This is, isa-isa talaga. Grabe. Yun yung alatang marked by the presence of God, eh. Ina-acknowledge si Lord sa lahat ng bagay. Kitang-kita yung kamay ni Lord sa lahat ng bagay. Anyway, so I remember when he said that uh, he was being wheeled in into the surgery room, he was smiling. Sabi ko, siguro kasi numb, wala kang mag-feel, kaya nagsasmile ka. Pinapanood daw niya yung surgery, bukas hindi daw siya makatulog. I go, lo, scary naman yan. And he was just smiling because he said, oh, this is gonna bless so many people in the future. 
because I've seen the hand of God in my life. Wow. So I encourage you, everyone, be kind to others, be generous to others, share your story, be vulnerable. Even if the if hindi mo pan, even if there are no results, no breakthrough yet, share it to someone. Share your hurts and pains. You're not supposed to go through it alone. Share it, open it up because they will see your weakness. But you're allowing them to be a part of your life so they will see the hand of God in your life and they will be encouraged. Amen. So, my cousin actually, the one who came yesterday, her name is Eliza. Uh, we've been praying for our family years. Mom's still the only Christian. And then now her. Took a lot. But, to, and now her. Yes. And I asked her yesterday, we had dinner. I said, we would, Papi and Mommy would always share about Jesus when we were all hanging out in reunions and Christmas parties growing up. You th do you think you would have listened during that time and accepted Jesus? She said, I don't think so. My heart opened when I, I had to reach the end of myself. I had to go through all of this for me to know I needed a Savior. That's what she said. And you know, she's given her life to Jesus. But if you hear her story, she's going through a lot. Sickness in the family. Divorce in the middle of everything. She has been betrayed. She has been overlooked. She has had moments where there's only a couple of dirhams in her pocket. She needed to get a visa. She had to go. She, she needed to, uh, to, 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 to do her job well. Otherwise, her kid wouldn't be able to go to school. Her kid couldn't go to school because she didn't have, she couldn't pay for the kid. Adame, madame. And yet, you'll see her smiling. But just on Friday, she called me, Wednesday, she called me up and said, Pea. And mind you, she was sick at this time and she had to send a family member to the hospital at that time, huh? She said, Pea, Pea, Pea. She was smiling. She was crying, crying so much. She said, I got custody for my child. I got custody for my girl, she said. And now she is, and, and, and you see the favor of God. But, but you know what I love about her? She showed me screenshots of the word of God that, that, that she held on to. She said, she, al alam mo ba? I, I'm gonna show you. This is it. She showed me. She sent it to me to remind me, like, God told me this. And I'm seeing it happen already. She said, in, she, she sent me a, a, a screenshot of Romans 3. And it says there, somewhere along the lines of there, you will be proved right in what you say and you will win in your case in court. Verse 4. Grabe. That was revealed to her months ago. And now she's joyful. She said, this is not me. <laughs> strength, but this is all God. And she said, she was crying a lot. And she said, how can I not give my life to Jesus? That is a woman of God who you can see is marked by the presence of God. Amen? Don't have it twisted. What you're going through, God's hand is still on it. Remember that eternity is in mind. Keep eternity. Have hope. Have that eternal perspective. Remember that because you need it to go through tough times. The last one is this. D. Dedicated to bless God every chance we get. A, mar a person marked by the presence of God, even in tough times, it looks like they're still dedicated to bless God every chance they get. They'll say, God, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. But you are still God. I will still bless you, Lord. The fact that you gave me salvation already, that's more than enough. I bless you, Lord. Whatever I get here, here on earth, it's just, it's just added stuff. But it's not as good as you. Dedicated to bless God every chance we get. Psalms 103 verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. I still bless you, Lord, in the, in the mountains, in the valleys. I still bless you. I bless you, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised. 
That's the heart posture that David had. That's why he was called the man after God's own heart. Bless God in the f- there's a song that I love that I've been listening to every day. It's called Bless God. It's by Brooke Lighterwood, I think. You can you can search it up on YouTube. But a part of that song says, Come on and praise the Lord with me. Sing if you love his name. Come on and bring your offering. Sing if you've known his grace. Come on and lift up your hands. He's worthy of all our praise. And the bridge goes like, Bless God in the sanctuary. Bless God in the fields of plenty. Bless God in the darkest valley. Every chance I get, I'll bless your name. Bless God when my hands are empty. Bless God with the praise that costs me. Bless God when no bad, nobody is watching. And every chance I get, I'll bless your name. Bless God when the weapons are forming. Bless God when the walls are falling. Bless God because He goes before me. Every chance I get, I'll bless your name. Bless God for He holds the victory. Bless God for He's always with me. Bless God because He's always worthy and every chance I get, I will bless your name. So come on and praise Him because He is worthy to be praised. Could we be a people who would bless the Lord at all times? Can I ask everyone to stand up?